the last several weeks have been a very rocky time in the financial markets again. So I thought it was important to give some perspective and share some thoughts as we move into the final quarter of the year. And right off the bat, I just want to be clear that the intent in doing these is not to sound any alarms. Um, but even for long term investors like you and me, these swings and losses are never comfortable. Um, I even need to remind myself that we needed to stay diversified and resist that urge to jump ship. So if you're fine to trust the process, you're not stressed right now, um, I think that's great. We promise to communicate directly if and when we feel we need to make some adjustments. Uh, but if you do want to get a little deeper into the weeds with me today, my intent is to share a couple things that we're reading, following, uh, just as I did back in June and in May and March before that. So I'll start there. The predominant theme of 2022 has not changed at all. Stock and bond markets really continue to struggle with inflation. You're undoubtedly feeling it, not only as an investor, uh, but as a household with these prices, as businesses. Uh, we're all navigating those higher prices and borrowing costs, and that certainly creates challenges not only for us and our pocketbooks, uh, but for the whole economy. The Federal Reserve, um, I'll keep calling them the Fed moving forward, they're going to continue to raise interest rates to try to control inflation and bring some price stability again. It's really one of the only few tools the Fed has to try to control inflation, um, but it's not as though they can just you know, turn a dial and flip a switch and see inflation change. There are a lot of factors that drive prices. So a lot of uncertainty remains on how the Fed raising rates will actually play out and over what period of time. And I think we also need to recognize there are a lot of factors still out of control of the Fed um, with really no clarity on when they may have some resolution. Think about the supply chain issues we still have. Uh, messing with that supply and demand balance. Uh, we still see zero COVID policy in China that I think further skews demand and production. Um, and we still have a war in Ukraine that's sending ripples well beyond just the battlegrounds. Remember, the market really hates uncertainty, so it's trying to figure out how this is all going to play out. And as the Fed is stating it's willing to do really whatever it takes to rein in prices, that means they could be deliberately slowing growth in the economy. And the fact is that that could potentially induce a recession. Recession is going to mean lower expectations on corporate profits, and that's the key driver to stock prices. So here we are. Uh, now, the market's not the economy, but the market is very forward looking. And I think that's why you're seeing the market trying to find a prediction on whether the Fed can find that balance of slowing the economy without pushing us into recession. Um, and you're going to hear arguments on both sides of whether they can pull that off or not. But while that debate is happening, the reality is we're going to go through some, some periods of uncertainty here and the markets are going to react. We're going to see this volatility. It probably means it's going to be hard to be making money in any asset classes, um, not just stocks. I mean, we know bonds typically do poorly when there are ongoing interest rate hikes and rising inflation. We should expect that that's going to be no different this time. Um, as I said, the slowing economic growth really is going to impact corporate earnings, and that means prices could go down on stocks. And that's not just here in the U.S. International markets are going to be faced and are faced with the similar challenges um, and put the Ukraine war on top of that in a strong do dollar, and you can't hide there either. So here's the point. It's not comfortable. Um, none of this is fun. But I do want to try to flip the script a little bit and share what I feel is a positive spin. Um, I can reasonably put some of this into the positivity camp, and I'm gonna use some of the thoughts directly from the chief economist with LPL Research. Inflation is decelerating. Gas prices and agricultural commodity prices, for example, they have declined throughout the summer. We're seeing rents coming down in certain areas of the country. Durable good prices are declining. Uh, some import prices are falling. And when the central bankers are kind of sufficiently convinced that the Fed can slow that pace of tightening as inflation moves closer to their long-term target, the hope is stock prices will rebound. Here's the second thing. Um, some of the recent volatility came from mixed inflation signals. So as those signals become more aligned, maybe volatility will fall and investor feelings will improve. Uh, the level of kind of fear and bearishness right now is extremely high. Um, and it's important to remember that historically, when we get a lot of those negative feelings, it's often been followed by a strong market. Uh, take, for example, there's a 
a survey that's done by the American Association of Individual Investors going all the way back to 1987. They do this weekly. Last week's survey had the level of bearishness seen only four other times before. Um, S&P 500 returns a year later were close to over 30% in those cases. We don't know whether that'll happen again. My point is there's a contrarian signal here uh, that when it gets that low, sometimes that's the time when the market's gonna turn. Look back to 2020 when a lot of the negative sediment was being priced into the markets. It set a new low for stocks and then the outperformance kind of came um, in COVID. Also think timing. We have some positive seasonal patterns ahead. Uh, November to April historically are very strong months for stocks. Um, stocks also have done well after midterm elections historically. And the third year of a four year presidential cycle, which we enter next year, has historically been the strongest for stocks. So all of that, some positives to lean on. I have two more final thoughts uh, to kind of be in the glass half full camp. As interest rates are rising, bond yields are up, right? Rising rates to combat inflation has been a positive for income driven investors. For many years, you invested in bonds for safety, but they really weren't paying you a whole lot just to own them. Moving forward, that rise in rates certainly has the potential to increase income from a portfolio, which of course is a main objective for most of our retirees and their portfolio paychecks. So if you think about what that means, you may need less money to produce the same amount of income moving forward. And lastly, here's this. Recessions are unfortunately a very normal part of the business cycle. I hope you'll get to meet Mike, our new teammate, as he pointed out, recessions are not unlike forest fires, right? There's danger there, there can be harm, but forest fires can also help the environment too. Same for recessions. There's a natural cycle of kind of destruction and then recreation that happens in our economy too. They're not desired, uh, but they make room for new businesses to grow, for good businesses to continue to adapt. And sometimes that recovery and regrowth is rapid and of course can lead to new highs. So despite all the doom and gloom, uh, we continue to believe it's important to remain invested. Focus on the long-term investment goals. Try not to time markets. Is the worst over? I don't know, no one can know. But a key factor to investing is remembering that markets are always forward looking. Once the bad news is priced into the markets, they often unexpectedly rally well before the data tells us that they should. So think back to COVID again in 2020 and the rebound after the great recession of 2009. In both cases, we were still feeling the economy may have been like broken as markets had historical rallies for what seemed to be no reason whatsoever. So we can't miss those recoveries. That's why we believe the surest path to all of this is sound financial planning and try to have a steady hand during these times. Diversify, stay invested, because even if you don't see a clear reason for the next market rally to take place, it really could be just one or two economic reports away. Thanks and reach out if you have any questions.